I've recently turned 39. Happy birthday to me. Almost 40 and I'm still making YouTube videos with silly little clips in. <laughs> oh, what is my life? Anyway, I got this Garmin watch for my 38th birthday, which maths experts will know means I've had it for just over a year. In that time, I've worn it pretty much non-stop to track everything that I'm doing. So in this video, I'm gonna do some fitness tests to A, work out how fit I am, and two, work out how accurate this is. The main tests were for my VO2 max and blood lactate. I'll get onto those and why I was doing them in a second. But before that, they took my height, weight, and did like a full body scan. So if you stand on the rock, and they both hands down, and you take hold of the grips over the top. There you go. This should sound big, big, Oh, that's going to be very nice. I'm going to like this one. 72.85. So we can look into this and see that you're in a nice normal range for your weight and everything. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we don't read too much into it because if you are really muscular, it might kind yeah. of put you. But this is on norms. BMI, 20.2. Again, um, that's really good. Um, but if you were muscular, it might show you as being obese but you wouldn't be so yeah. quite often with athletes we don't always pay a lot of attention to this um body fat 14.4 that's that's really good so that puts you in a really good healthy normal range okay muscle mass 59.2 muscle quality is 51 so what that does is it tells us whether you're leaner or more muscular if you're a power athlete you'd come up on here mm -hmm. okay so we're okay we're fine uh, body type, you're a number four. Great. So that means you're a lean normal. So this is um, well, normal, um, obese, um, lean and normal. And yep. you're down the end. There. Okay. Um, bone mass, 3.1. That's good. So bone mass in right in the middle of normal. Uh, visible fat, 4.0. That's great. That's good. So that's the fat that's going to kill you. Um, right. It's the fat that's around your organs, your yep. kidneys, heart, lungs, everything like that. Yours is nice and low, okay? Really people who, yeah, that's yeah. good. 4.0 is great. Yeah. Um, people who drink a lot will be up here. Um, that's the one where you can get sort of skinny fat, yeah. where um, someone looks thin on the outside, but if they've got a debauched lifestyle, if they're drinking a lot of alcohol and they're eating a lot of fast food, um, that might, they might have a lot of fatty buildup around their major organs, mm -hmm. and that's going to really hurt them. You don't have that. That's great. Base metabolic rate, basically just to, to survive, okay? Um, without moving, without exercising, anything like that. Yep. Um, 1,700. And you're 23 years old. <laughs> there you That'd go. That'd be nice. <laughs> Roll back the years. So, <laughs> you're 23 years old. Um, How do I actually your body calculate work? that? So, unfortunately, it's, like, it's national averages and stuff like that. So right. on the na national average, you have the body of a 23 year old, basically how your body is working and how effective it is. So if we go back to that visceral fat, if you had a higher visceral fat, mm -hmm. it would put you older. If you had a higher body fat content, it would put you older. Yeah. So basically, and you can take that as it's kind of looking at all the risk factors right. um, and you're doing well. Good. <laughs> and, and body water again, we've got 64.4%. Um, so you're really nice and hydrated. We know you're not going to dehydrate on the test today. Cool. So I've got that <laughs> as an excuse then. Yeah. yeah. Next up was the real deal, the VO2 max and blood lactate test, which involves putting on this weird mask. Pardon? And running on a treadmill that keeps getting faster and faster. <laughs> until eventually you basically can't breathe. While every three minutes, someone jabs a needle into your finger and draws some blood. That sounds lovely. It wasn't actually too bad, although the mask does take a bit of getting used to and the end of the test, obviously it does get pretty tough. Anyway, afterwards, Ben chatted me through all the results. Really important one for me would be this one. So lactate profile speed kilometers per hour, blood lactate mmol, and heart rate in beats per minutes. So this one's your blood lactate, mm -hmm. and that one's your heart rate. 
I've got this line through 4-MMR on blood lactate. That line, um, some people call it OBLA, O-B-L-A, which is the onset of blood lactate accumulation. It's the point that once you pass it, if you keep increasing it intensity, um, the, you're basically going over a cliff and you can see how it goes steeply up here yeah. once we've gone across it. Here's what we've measured in your blood, blood lactate, that you're coming in around about 13 and a half kilometers an hour. Because what you start to see is once you start to get into this zone here, once you're starting to burn three um, mmol plus, um, you're going to deplete very quickly. Mm. I found the results really interesting. The main reason for me doing them was that I ran my first marathon last year. <laughs> and I missed my target time of sub four hours by 88 seconds. Ooh, so close. So I've signed up to do another marathon this spring. And the idea is that the results will help Ben, who is now my running coach, who ever thought I'd have a running coach, um, help him give me a training plan that's kind of tailored to what I need to improve like the different areas, different effort levels and that sort of stuff with the main objective of getting under four hours this time. If you could bring these numbers down and there's nothing to say that you can't, so that 11, 12 kilometers now you're running but you're only generating that 1.6 mmol, right? Mm -hmm. We've just shifted that graph all the way along. So whereas you did your marathon at sort of 10 and a half kilometers an hour, through training, you'd be able to go, no, I can do it at 12 kilometers an hour now. Mm. Yeah. And that's not, you know, that that's more than feasible. And what I say is, how do we push all of that data? So we talk about the rightward shift on the graph and everything mm -hmm. like that. How do we shift all of that data? By training all of those zones. And so I always say, in a training week, you know, don't go for mileage. Don't go for distance. Don't just go, have I ticked the boxes? Have I ticked? Bang, aerobic. Have I ticked threshold? Have I ticked top end? If you're ever out on a run and you ask yourself the question, what is this, what specifically is this run doing to my end goal? If you can't answer that, bin it. Me picking, say, a sub four hour marathon target, mm -hmm. it was kind of arbitrary. Like I didn't have any of the data to say like, Am I in condition to do that? Would mm -hmm. I be in condition after a 20 week training plan or whatever mm -hmm. to do it? Mm -hmm. So looking at the data there, mm -hmm. um, and obviously where, you know, it gets hard for me, where my body starts to like burn through the carbs and where my mm -hmm. lactate starts to peak mm -hmm. up. Yeah. What right now would be, say if I had that marathon tomorrow, if you had to say to me, here's the target time you should be aiming for, what would that be today? And then how much can I hope to move that over the course of, I don't know, what, like five months? Five months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah good question. I mean, it, it's easy. The, the first part of that is easy to answer because I know I've got, I've got intel that you've already, what you've already run sort of five yeah. years ago. You're not going to be far off, out of that. If you went out and ran it tomorrow, you're going to be in the same kind of realm. Um, so that kind of matches up the data there with the actual result. Yeah. So you said you ran it in four... 401 and 401. 28 seconds or something like if that. If I was, like, if you came to me, well, no, right now, if you said to me, of, of, you know, um, I've got off of this data, um, I've got a marathon next weekend, can you just tell me what you think I should yeah. find a name for? I'd go, go for four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, because, you know, it's just going to, you, you're going to be within the realms that you're pushing at, that yeah. you're capable of pushing at. I wouldn't be saying go for three and a half because you'll blow up mm. 100%. Mm. Now, where can you get to? So 20 week, 20 week pre training program. So you should definitely be going, looking at 3.30 and crossing, yeah? Okay, that'd be good. Yeah. I, I would realistically, that's where I'd be, I'd be looking at. Mm. Yeah, Ben's saying that I should be aiming for a 3.28 marathon next time. I mean, that sounds fantastic, but the idea of that at the moment feels ridiculous. Like, to be averaging just under eight minute miles for a whole marathon, yeah, that seems really hard. But to be fair, when I started marathon training last time, running more than like three or four miles felt impossible. And quite quickly, I got to a point where, you know, running 18, 20 miles didn't feel that bad. So, 
I guess, yeah, just gonna show you body can adapt stuff pretty quickly. So I keep looking up there, there's like a little bird flying around. Um, yeah, so let's just stick with the training and see how it goes. So what you have to do now is like, you've done that race. Okay, you'd like to have gone sub four. So there's lots of things. You've got experience. Yeah. You've got experience off of that. But where you're at right now, don't see that, that that's not the top anymore, that's the bottom. Mm. So you're now c coming off of a higher base. So yeah. you're coming off of a four, four hour marathon base. Now, when you started training for that marathon, what hour marathon base were you at? Yeah, no clue. I mean, yeah. I'd never run more than, well, for a long time, I hadn't run more than like a few miles okay. at a time. So, so if you had have gone out, you probably would have been knocking closer to the, the other end. Yeah. There. So, but now, your your basic your starting point is four hours, mm. so it goes without saying that another five months of training. Mm. Yeah, I want to see you like three and a half mm. and cross. I've already started the training that Ben's been giving me, and I would say it's a lot more challenging than the just like standard training plan that I found online last time. Like you are really really fully armoured now because you've got like. I'm laying it down now. I'm saying like, right, you've got, you've easily got three and a half in you, right? So that, that actually gives us an end goal. That's great. Do you just work it backwards off of that? You're right. So the, these are the paces that I need to be working at mm. to try and get to it. And you've got the armor of knowing exactly where you're at now. We know exactly where we're at. We know what we're capable of and we know where we're going. What we've got to do is fill the gap in between. Yeah. So how accurate is my Garmin? Well, yeah, so my VO2 max from the test was 50. My VO2 max on my Garmin is 54. So I'd say that's pretty close. Obviously, it's within 10%. And to be honest, if my life depended on it, I could have maybe stayed on the treadmill for like a little bit longer, which might have got my VO2 max in that test to like 51 or 52. But I was struggling. I didn't think I was going to last the next three minute chunk. And I didn't really fancy falling off the back of the treadmill. Your Garmin is only kind of guessing your VO2 max based on other things and then making a calculation of what it thinks your VO2 max is. So yeah, as I've seen, it's pretty accurate, but it's never gonna be as accurate as a VO2 max test. Same as, you know, the heart rate monitor on it that you're getting from your wrist is not gonna be as accurate as if you're wearing like a proper chest strap or something. But I think for most people, if you bear that in mind, there's a little bit of tolerance either way, it's pretty good, pretty accurate. So well done, Garmin. Ben is this kind of super coach. He has got a master's degree in sport and health science. He's also a resident physiologist at the Woodland Clinic in Biddeford, which is where I went for my tests. So I'll put links to that down below if you want to get in touch with Ben for training or you want to go and do your VO2 and blood lactate test. And the setup was great. You're the only person in there and they really look after you. Like he took so much time to talk me through all the results afterwards. So. Yeah, can't recommend it enough. So yeah, fingers crossed for sub four hour, maybe sub three and a half hour marathons this time. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future.